can go on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're a flown astronaut, and um, I know a lot of people that have fascination with space or become astronauts um, or were inspired by something, so I was curious what inspired you to go down the path that you went down. Uh, that's a good question. But first, first of all, I've been walking around here at Dragon Con, and I get the same question over and over, which is like, are you real? Did you like really? And I'm like, yes, I'm not cosplaying a astronaut. Um, if I was, you know, on TV as an astronaut, I'd be a lot taller and better looking. So, no, I am real. Um, so, what inspired me? Well, you know, as a kid, I used to watch films of the Apollo missions. And uh, I'll date myself, I had it on a Super 8 uh, film, and I would run that through a little projector in my room. And that thing was notoriously unreliable, and I would end up having to re-splice it because it would break all the time. It had the on that reel, the weight of the of the scotch tape was heavier than the weight of the film that was on that reel. Because I watched it over and over and over, I loved it. And I, I read every book in my school library about airplanes and rockets. I just loved it. And then, and I went and visited the Air and Space Museum when I was 13. And uh, and my parents were like, okay, we're going to be here for just like an hour, and then we're going to go sit in Lincoln Memorial or something, and uh, for this and. And, it, and an hour later, we met up, and I said, look, I made it through one room, and there's like dozens of them here. You can go see the Lincoln Memorial, but I need a couple, I need two more days. And uh, come, you come back and get me. So they left me there, uh, and, uh, and they eventually came back. But I, so that was inspiring. Uh, and then my high school physics teacher really Im imbued in me. Um, his name is Jerry Vandervoort, and he really imparted to me a great love of physics and science in general. So those are some of, the, some of the most important things. But, but despite all of that, if you asked me when I was in high school what I was going to be when I grow up, I never would have said astronaut. <laughs> I would have said, no, engineer, scientist, maybe doctor or something like that. Because two things. One, my mom is afraid of flying. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, uh, she wasn't going to let me go become a fighter pilot or anything. And then, uh, and then two, I just never thought it would happen to me. You know? But then when I was an undergraduate, so the next thing that inspired me was at the end of my college days, I looked up in a magazine some of the biographies of some of the astronauts that they had just selected. And I'll, I'll begin, so Super 8 film magazines, for you guys, that, those are the things that used to like, there was like, it was hard copies of things, you would actually turn pages <laughs> and there'd be pictures and text, okay. You didn't swipe. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. All right, so anyway, um, so they, they're <laughs> in, these, in these magazines I read and, 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 and the, what these people had done for their education and for their job, it actually wasn't that different from what I was doing. And a little light bulb went off and said, hey, you know, maybe this is in the realm of possibility. And I filled out the application. Very cool. It's a long answer to yeah. a long <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, well, you've talked before about having a lot of fun on the STS-132 crew. Mm -hmm. Do you have any quick stories you can tell us? <laughs> oh, 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 man. <laughs> I'm going to get a venture uh, <laughs> 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 This is going on the uh, uh, on the internet, right? <laughs> okay, no nudity. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Or um, what made it so fun for you? If there's no stories that you could. <laughs> well, it was just a great crew. Mm -hmm. um, it was. I was so fortunate to be part of this crew, uh, starting with our commander Ken Ham. Mm -hmm. That guy was hands down the best pilot I've ever flown with. Mm -hmm. We did things in, in, in a T-38 that like I've only seen in video games. I mean, it was crazy. And he just had a, he had a real sense of uh, adventure and spontaneity and just having fun. Yeah. And so that kind of set the tone for the whole crew. And we had a lot of jokesters on the crew. We had a lot of people that just liked to, to have a good time. And, and uh, so we had, we had almost too much fun. So I do remember we're standing there. Can I use a little profanity? Is that going to be? Yeah, I yeah. yeah. We're good. We're good. <laughs> so I remember standing there. Um, uh, and and we're gazing up at this at the space shuttle. The the, um, the this is kind of like a little motor home that that drives you out to the launch pad, and you plug in your cooling to your suits, and and you get in that, and then you step out, and you are and your crew are the only ones around, and you're gazing up at this massive machine that's like alive. I mean, it's like venting. It's like a dragon hissing fire. I don't know what made me think of that. Uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> it's like his machinery moving around. It's like it's like a living thing, and it's enormous, and it's like something straight out of science fiction, right? It's like you're gazing up at this rocket that's about to blast you off the surface of the Earth, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, it's a really poignant moment. And by the way, it's just you because all this, because this thing is filled with liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. It's like a giant bomb, really. 
and all the sane people are at least five miles away from this thing, right? But you're there <laughs> just you and the crew. And uh, I'm standing, I remember the pilot, which guy named Tony Anton Antonelli came up to me, kind of put his arm around me as we're gazing up and having this moment. And he said, you know, all this joking around we've been doing, it's going to look really stupid if we this <laughs> suck. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, why, why do you have to tell me that now? No. Man. <laughs> Not now. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So this question actually came from one of my friends. Um, she said a lot of people, you know, that have never been to space um, don't know what it's weightlessness, weightlessness is like, but they have this just idea in their head what it's like. And so she was curious, um, for you, was it like you imagined or totally different? And can you explain it, uh, describe it a little bit? Yeah, it, it, um, it was better. It was better than I expected. Um, so yeah, people. I think when people think uh, like weightless, and when you see it in movies and stuff, it, it equates to like slow motion. But that's actually not. You know, you just move. You move the same way you do that in here. So it's, it's not slow motion, but it's it's the ability to float, and it's, it's more like the ability to fly. And that was awesome. <laughs> if you ever had that dream where like you put out your arms, you're running through a field or something like in your backyard, and all of a sudden you can fly, mm -hmm. and you're flying around your neighborhood and stuff like. It's like that like every day and it's that's how you get to work right you don't hop <laughs> in your car you don't get on the freeway you you're, you're basically superman and and who doesn't want to be superman right i mean that was like super mm -hmm. fun if you ever played a game like what superpower flying fun. pick <laughs> flying i'm telling you it's 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 the best <laughs> kind of going along with that um my husband actually wanted to ask this <laughs> 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 he's afraid of flying so compared to the turbulence that you experience on an airplane, what's the turbulence like in a rocket and <laughs> during liftoff and reentry, and do movies portray it accurately? Ah, wow, those are really good questions. That's great. Um, so when it's very different. So it's, it's much worse than turbulence in an airplane when you're launching, but actually much better when you're coming home. So when you launch, it, it is loud. It shakes around like crazy. It's not like totally nuts. It's not like, in movies, over dramatize it probably more than they should, but there is quite a bit of shaking. If, if you've been on a, uh, like a motion simulator kind of ride, <laughs> it's not all that different from, from that. If you go down to you know, the visitor center in Florida, at the Cape, you can, mm -hmm. it's kind of like that. Um, the G-forces are different. You feel three Gs, and that, that, the, the weird thing about that is it goes on for a long time, and that's, that's unusual. But, um, but it's worse than, it's definitely worse than, than uh, in a normal airplane. Those Gs, you have to, thinking, I'm, I'm sorry, um, breathing becomes no longer involuntary. You have to actually think about it actively. And, and, and you figure this out very quickly because that survival instinct is like really strong. <laughs> so um, you, get, you, you get that working out, but you have to think about it. So yeah, launch is pretty physically impressive. Entry, not so much. Entry is totally smooth. It's like, like in, in, in the movies and stuff, it's always so dramatic. Like, Brace for entry. It's like, right. <laughs> yeah, they're all sweating. Uh, it's, it's hot. And it's not like that at all. It's, it's uh, you, you know, it's hot outside. You look out the window, you see that plasma out there, and you, you don't want to be part of that. Uh, but inside, it's great. The, the the thermal protection system on the shuttle did a great job of insulating us mm -hmm. from that heat. The suits are have cooling systems that keep you nice and cool, and it's smooth. Right around. Um, Mach 1, right, we're going through the transonic regime, uh, you get a little bit of buffet, just kind of like this. It's like a really, really good day on Southwest. <laughs> so, so nobody, and touchdown, I would have I actually not noticed if I wasn't paying very close attention. Very smooth. Wow. Yeah. We have time for one more question. Here I got that. Oop, uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, we're very questions now. Um, let's see. Well, you had reference to a uh, spaceship being a she. Mm. Um, is there, do you end up giving the spaceship their own personality? Like, uh, did you guys come up with um, her own name? Or, <laughs> you know, was it, what was the reason for calling it a she or her, mm. that pronoun? Yeah, I guess this is somewhat antiquated uh, gender specificity, mm -hmm. but. Um, but I, but it just kind of traditionally I think uh, like all ve vehicles and vessels mm -hmm. uh, I think we refer to them in, in the female uh, mm -hmm. and I guess it's because you 
to some extent you love them, uh, I <laughs> guess. And the crews historically have been mostly male, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't mm. It's just kind of a thing. I referred. To, I even referred to my 1975 international scout as a she, mm. despite the fact that we nicknamed it Jack. So <laughs> I mean. I don't know. It's just something you do. Just kind of give it like the she personality yeah. and yeah, because you become you know uh, pretty interdependent and and uh, uh, on 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 your your airplane, your space shuttle, your even your truck, you know. So so you develop a certain relationship and and the and it's interesting. The space shuttles are almost identical. I mean, when you, uh, you know, when you look at them from the outside, if you don't read the name on the side, you can't really tell. Um, and w even when you're inside, unless you're really highly trained, there's only a few differences, like one or two panels that are different on Atlantis compared to Discovery or Endeavor. Uh, they have slightly different equipment, and, and so we have to know where to look. Um, so so they're really pretty similar, although they, they do fly a little bit differently. Um, I remember uh, um, Atlantis was pretty smooth coming home. Discovery had a little bit more I mean, it still was really smooth compared to Southwest one, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but had a little bit more. You know, had, she had a little bit of personality. So um, there are there are subtle differences, mm -hmm. and then just to, you know, um, then you have certain preferences based on your personal history. So Endeavor, uh, being the one I launched on first, uh, is the the one that's always going to be the most special to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And fortunately, it's in California, right up the road, so I can always take my six-year-old by to see daddy's spaceship. Uh, he, but by, he thinks all daddies have a spaceship, oh. so <laughs> <laughs> don't tell him. Well, thank, thank you so thank much, you so much. Garrett. Thank sure. You. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah, that was fun.